I've always struggled with commitment. I used to think, in a world as grand as ours, shouldn't we try to experience it all? Change it up, visit every country, then try a bunch of careers. But recently, my values have started to change. I now want multi-decade friendships and a professional life where I can build things that compounded value at an exponential rate. I want a place that I can call home and a large family that I can share that home with. And I want to become an expert in the ideas that resonate with me most, instead of suffering from shiny object syndrome. And as my priorities have shifted, I've discovered that the key to finishing what you start every time to building your personal monopoly and then achieving life-changing success for yourself, whether in family life or with careers or with friends, the key is to master commitment. So let's talk about how. But first, we need to understand the problem. And I have three theories about why our modern culture is so afraid of commitment. The first is a cultural one, the second is a technological one, and the third, a sociological one. And I'm gonna break down each one pretty fast here. For a cultural explanation, I look at the rise of liberalism. In his book, Why Liberalism Failed, the author Patrick Deneen argues that the project of liberalism seeks to detach us from the constraints that once tied us down. He talks about family, culture, place, identity, and tradition. And today, with liberalism freeing us from the ties of kin and place, we're no longer bound by the traditional virtues of honor and loyalty, which are two of the defining pillars of a commitment-heavy culture. And then, for a technological explanation, I look at our culture of abundance. The so muchness of modern life has given us commitment anxiety. People saying, do this, do this, do that, buy this, buy this, buy that. And we have this version of the paradox of choice, which argues that people can reduce anxiety by eliminating choice, by eliminating their options. Because the more options that surround you, the less likely you're gonna be to make long-term commitments. And that's why I can read a book on a Kindle, but if I try to read the same book on the Kindle app on my iPhone, I just can't do it. I get too distracted. The words are the same, but the context, it isn't. And easy access to the internet, it reduces my attention span to that of like a sidewalk pigeon or something. And then for a sociological explanation, I look at the shortening time horizons in the West. Most people in Western countries are having kids at below replacement rate and people are getting married later too. And instead of thinking about building intergenerational family wealth, people are thinking about their own desires and their own freedom. And a result of these three convergent trends, remember the rise of liberalism, technological abundance, and then shortening time horizons, we've been overvaluing optionality at the expense of commitment. The genesis of my realization goes back to a Harvard commencement speech called The Trouble with Optionality. And in it, the professor, Mahir Desai, defines optionality as the state of enjoying possibilities without being on the hook to do anything. With enough optionality, he says, you can always change what you're doing in order to pursue something better. And the professor critiques students for seeing optionality as an end in itself and not a means to an end. So instead of trying to work towards a meaningful goal that they can commit to, what these college students were doing is they were trying to accumulate options in order to delay the act of making a firm commitment, something that they could say, hey, I'm going to do this for a while. And the result, because this, this thinking has pervaded society, is that we're undercommitted as a culture. And now, I'm not saying that you should commit to everything right away. Absolutely not. And committing to everything is an oxymoron anyways, because attention is zero sum. And committing too early and for too long at the get-go, it's foolish. So. Don't get married after your first date. And then commitment also has opportunity costs because you can only commit to things that matter to you if you're discerning about those that don't. And in my own life, I've seen how entrepreneurship is similar too. I saw how once I committed to running Rite of Passage for the long term, my FOMO disappeared. And instantly, I just felt calmer, you know? And though I classified my first few cohorts as an experiment, until I proved out the business model, I committed to the business in perpetuity long before my friends thought it was reasonable to do so. And I've seen how surface level experimentation at the beginning can lead to deeper commitments down the road. And part of the reason that I'm so tied to online writing as an idea is that 
I've explored a lot of other paths in the past. You know, I've dabbled in cryptocurrencies, consulting, advertising, broadcasting, sports. I mean, for years, I wanted to be a professional golfer, and that didn't work out. But I've learned that the commitments that you make in the present are made possible by the experiments you've tried in the past. And internally, at Rite of Passage, we have a saying that a good product is subtle improvements compounded over time. And commitment is the only way to take advantage of that compounding. And though commitment is, yeah, a structure, a very top-down way of navigating life, most of my projects, they begin as bottom-up endeavors. They're driven by intuition and curiosity and experimentation. But then once the bottom-up projects, they start to go a little wild, they feel a little chaotic, what I do is I step back and I look at what's naturally emerged and then I add a top-down structure to it. And I found that consolidating those efforts, it's a form of commitment. But crucially, you have to experiment with the goal of eventually committing to something. Otherwise, you'll remain in a state of perpetual optionality where, like a log in the ocean, you'll float thousands of miles without going anywhere in particular. And this floating, where you're like a log in the ocean, this is what we mean when we say that people are adrift these days. But the question you should ask is, when should you stop exploring and actually commit? And mathematicians, they've tried providing an answer. And this is called the secretary problem. So suppose that you want to hire a secretary for your job. Well, how many people should you interview? And then when should you make an assistant? And the math shows that you maximize your chances of making an optimal choice by looking at 37% of the candidates and selecting from the best one among them. And I'll be honest, even though I'm happy to know the math, and I think it's a good start, the reality of commitment is way more complicated. Problems arise when people associate freedom with a lack of commitments. But the kind of freedom that ultimately fulfills and uplifts us comes from making the right kinds of commitments. So in business, if you want the freedom that comes with wealth, you have to commit to a company by investing your time or money. And if you invest your time, you can no longer frolic around from passion project to passion project. No, you gotta commit. And the benefits of building a company, say purpose, financial security, and the sense of worth that comes from doing something important in the world, those things are granted only to people who show up day after day, and especially when they aren't in the mood. Ultimately, if I had to give one piece of advice to someone to master commitment and finish what you start when you really care about something, here's what it'd be. Whatever your tolerance for commitment is, raise it. So if you're comfortable committing to something for two hours, try committing for a weekend. If you're comfortable committing for two weeks, raise it to two months. And then once you're comfortable with two months, raise it to two years. And once you're comfortable with two years, raise it to two decades. Just keep leveling up. It's okay to start small. All big things do. But they have to start somehow. And with commitment comes momentum. So know that commitment happens in stages. And only by embracing it can you stop hugging the x-axis and climb the compounding curves of life. And for more videos about how to think longer term and build the future that you want for yourself, check out my video on why you might be addicted news in the present.